I did say two years ago that there was a weak uh, heartbeat in Murrayfield. I think now we have a very healthy patient and it's still due to the tenants in Murrayfield working with the council and the tenants changed the strategy direction. So it's them to thank very much for the uh, improvements that's taking place and will continue because there is a commitment in the council to continue with our Murrayfield strategy. To discuss the problems, let's talk to the tenants. I just see it's condensation. And one will tell you leave the window open, and one will tell you to shut the window. So I, I, I really don't know where I am, mate, because... I just and the electricity bill was £150 for eight weeks. It's when you've got visitors that you feel it. Water comes through the kitchen in this part here. It comes through over there. It comes down through the bathroom. It's uh, completely written off my middle bedroom. I had to get new carpets and a new bed and decorate the middle bedroom. My daughter had to be moved out of the room. They're just breaking it down and going in and vandalising the whole lot of the flats. The, the two at that side, there's hardly anything in it. All the doors and that have been ripped off it. One day's pulled out and two or three at this other side, they're just about the same and all. Yeah. Prior in 1985, uh, I'll tell you, it wasn't easy. Um, we felt that, um, we're quite honest, we were only getting a fair two. We felt that Murrayfield uh, was in a dilapidated state, and we felt the council, though they tried putting money in it, uh, we felt it wasn't enough. And I'll be quite honest, we, um, at times, um, I felt they like just packing the wall and were that frustrated. So all the tenants were getting, and they were leaving. They were leaving, there's no doubt in that. There's no new future for our kids or nothing. Um, but as you say, um, and we kept putting the views, we put a petition and we had 100 names to them, uh, to the district council. Um, we approached Michael Ancrum in 85 uh, with a special plea for the Murrayfield, but that was turned down. Um, and we came back a bit frustrated, there's no doubt in that. Mary and I came back and I spoke to Mary and I says, where are we going to go for here? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a dead end. They might as well put brick walls up in Blackburn. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it was coming to. It wasn't accepted. People couldn't live in the conditions any longer. So we had a meeting with John, Mr. Spragan and, with a, and Robert Lee. And we put our points of view and said, look, it's, it's, there's no end product here. Mm -hmm. um, Some will have to be done. So he says, right, a uh, strategy plan for Murrayfield. And we'll give you all the professional help we can give you. And we went along to the district council office at the full committee. And by that time, we'd done a wee survey uh, of, the, of the priorities we felt, how the tenants felt. So it was along there with some ammunition to the council. Um, we sat around the table for eight or ten hours that day, uh, and we drew up a strategy plan. Now, we looked at the strategy plan um, for the present situation, for the future, because we're trying to build a scheme for our kids, not just for ourselves, we're thinking, we're thinking of our kids in the future. So the first priority we looked at was the tenants. What did they want? And because of your survey, everybody wanted a ground floor with gardens. It was as simple as that. There was no such thing as uh, up in first floors or second floors. There were lessons learned, ground floor, and we stuck to that. Yeah. And that was presented to our full council, I think it was in um, August 85, and they accepted it. Not on the time scale, but accepted the strategy plan, and and then it went for there, and on. So it's been a good thing. The Moneyfield Group persuaded the District Council that it was in the best interest of the scheme to have these flats knocked down. And so, only 20 years after they had been put up, everybody has admitted they were a bad idea from the start. I think everybody is glad to see these blocks going. Out of the original 28 deck access blocks in Murrayfield, 
there are only 10 still standing. Over the next few years, most of these will disappear. After having demolished these five old story blocks, we started to rebuild new terrace houses on the old foundations. We're also converting the four-story blocks to terrace houses like the ones over there, where the tenants have just moved in. These houses are a big improvement from the old. The tenants have their own front and back door, their own individual gardens, cavity wall insulation, gas central heating, good fitted doors and windows. Now, that all helps to keep the heating costs down. And of course, no more water penetration condensation or dampness and it practically eliminates vandalism. Now we're hoping to have a total of 16 more terrace housing like this to provide the homes that we are so desperately waiting for in this estate. You might remember the problems we had with the timber tops. In, in essence they were neither wind nor watertight and of course the lifespan of the roof was 10 years and have now been up for over 20 years. A lot of these timber tops have now been re-roofed and the external wood has been clad with celluloform insulation. And within the next two years, we hope the programme should be completed. And for over 1,000 people, that will mean a warm, dry and comfortable home. There's also been a big move to give tenants a garden. Originally, the scheme was designed as open plan. However, through the community programme at Bless, fencing can be built to give each timber top tenant their own front garden, where they can do just what they want. And there's been more demolition on the other side of the estate. Three years ago, these derelict five-storey point blocks were a real eyesore. These blocks have all been knocked down now and this has greatly improved the outlook for the tenants. And last of all, the private sector has been encouraged to take an interest in parts of the estate, as you can see here. Red House School has been converted into private flats. In addition, a lot of people have bought plots of land in and around the estate, where they have built their own houses. Well, over the last three years, one and a half million pounds has been spent within the estate. That's an average of 500,000 per annum. For the current financial year, we expect to spend a further 450,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And do you envisage that level of spending in the future? A lot depends on what resources are made available to district council by central government because of the strict financial control. If the capital allocations remain at the same level, one would hope that the level of support for Murrayfield will continue on the same basis. And they say it's snagging points. Well, they say it's a year before the Cumbrian Day. They didn't tell me you have to sit with these no. balls for a year. Who do you complain with them to, to, no. to call us the contract that they've done the job? Uh, no, if you mention the clerk of the clerk works who's works. coming round. And the friend is here. I thought he was well, uh, after it'll, a year. Well, it'll, it'll depend on uh, what the problem is. I don't know what the problem is. Mm, uh, it's highly unlikely that it, you'll have to wait a year. No, the contractor uh, continues doing a snagging throughout the year. So, but, I mean, if, if it's a, so if you if really go bad problems, do you get, how do you get yes, them? Do they leave you? The clerk who works should be coming around and Collins checking it out. Or it you, can, you can phone the architect. I don't know if they started to tattoo the problems because a couple of them had baths there. And no, they were all, it was the drains, and it was the, a problem. The water came through the ceiling after they let the, let the bath water out. And the fountain yes. when they went underneath the bath. The pipes didn't even go out. They connected the pipes. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> the pipes. Well, that's true. They got flooded. Yeah. 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 I must admit, with great help, and we couldn't have done it without the help of the District Council, the Housing Department, the Plan Department, and Urban Aid. They kept us right with a lot of things. There's no doubt. We put the suggestions, they put the technical advice to it. We could have done so much, but you need professional advice. We are very fortunate. We have Tom Haney, who's an outside architect. He has nothing to do with the District Council, nothing to do with the group.
but he attends every meeting and advises us, advises us on every aspect of what we're discussing. That mm -hmm. we couldn't have done a lot without him. In fact, I think he's the mainstay here because he has been again on this group from the initiation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's been coming to this group for the past 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's always important that you've got that independent person looking mm -hmm. from the outside in, um, who is is on no side. He's not the district council side. He's not on our side, but he's always there to advise you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's we've been very fortunate that way to have Tom uh, to give us his professional advice, and we've used it. Don't get me wrong, I've used it first person, and it's kept me right in a few times. I think you've established a landscaping pattern in Murrayfield. It requires to be reinforced, it requires to be considered in a comprehensive way. And I think this is this is not a start, but it's, it's certainly cleaning up that area and then other areas can be treated in the same manner. I would certainly support it. As well as Tom Haney, uh, the other group that we worked um, very closely with is the Urban Aid team. Um, they've been a great asset to us there involved in drawing up plans uh, for the strategy plan. They also get involved uh, with drawing up uh, plans for the, the fencing uh, with the community project. Uh, we get involved in their newsletter. Uh, again, they give us professional advice on a lot of matters. And they work closely with the tenants, especially during the day when we're not available. Uh, they become arrears during the day as far as I'm concerned and that gets away to back at night in committee meetings and they've also got contact with other organisations and they keep us uh, up to date and uh, a lot of legislation and I think that's important for us. In my picture I have drawn timber tops with flat roofs. The timber tops now have pointed roofs. This picture is how the Murrayfield area looked before the work began. The timber tops are now being renovated and painted, as you will see in the other pictures. Most flats are being knocked down because no one wants to live there anymore. They are being replaced by nicer houses. The flat in my picture is now painted and has a fence around it. When we get to Murrayfield area the way we want it, everyone will want to come and stay. In this picture you can see that the flats are all empty. The windows are broken and they are in a very dilapidated state because vandalism has struck. The people of Blackburn thought the flats were disgusting to look at and stay in and many started to move out. In my second picture you can see what in the near future to Murrayfield area will look like. Most of the flats will be knocked down and houses built in their place. The local people must surely feel happier with the work already done and they will, I'm sure, be proud of their area when the work is completed. Well, I can't there is a vast difference. Well, for a start, we haven't any dampness, mm -hmm. no drafts. Mm -hmm. The house is a little warmer, so I can imagine it'll be cheaper bills. Mm -hmm. The decorating, well, I don't think we'll have to decorate as much, because there's no dampness, you're not going to have to mm -hmm. decorate much. Mm -hmm. And what about outside? You've now got a garden. Well, you can see at least we've got the washing done without it getting stoned. We can put it out. Plus the fact we can get the children out in their safety. So I've got a two-year-old son. Well, he can play out here now, and nothing's going to happen to him. We'll be in any danger. Well, since they re-roofed it and made it an apex roof, and the insulation they done made a big difference in the house, and um, much warmer in the winter time. Like I enjoy gardening. It's a healthy exercise and we've been redundant now. I've plenty of time to knock about in the garden and do as I wish. Before, I mean, we had no privacy or anything like that and it wasn't really a garden because it was the council that cut the grass at the front. But now we're, we've got that bit more, it makes a difference. You take a bit of pride in things now that you're, everything's looking so nice and that. The people who used to live here still visit us here. Mm -hmm. They find an awful difference, and some of them are quite, frankly, hoped that they wish and they had never gone away. And they see the difference now. They see that they never would have left it if they'd had it like this in the first place. So. It's definitely what a difference since three years ago. I mean, uh, we were living in damp houses and 
you know, uh, we had vandals and that coming in. And if the square, I mean, when the square's finished, what a difference it's going to be. And I hope it'll, it'll prove the situation. It'll prove the atmosphere of the people living in it. Yes, I definitely think that. Teresa is one of the many people still waiting for a home in the promised terraced housing. As the flat she used to be in was demolished, she was moved into this block, the decant block. These are just a few of the people in this block waiting for a permanent home. And this is supposed to be five years before this comes down. So if the money came in quicker, Carol, this wouldn't be five years before it was doing. It would be doing even quicker. Because there's other people still to come into the house that I'm moving out with, decanting. I think what they're doing is terrific. As you can see the results over there, that they're absolutely beautiful when they're done. And I just hope that your turn comes in quick. As you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done. There's demolitions, rebuilds, conversions and the timber talks that have still got to be completed. We also need to look at the shopping centre. That badly needs upgraded to a better standard. Other factors that have to be looked at are the roofs for the three-storey flats, houses for the young single people, and of course, unemployment, which is now over 45% in the area. We need more action to provide good homes and jobs. I didn't even start in the day we started, it was a public meeting, it was called, and the group was set up from that public meeting, mm -hmm. and you really have got to have a commitment to it, it's not just mm -hmm. a, a meeting once no. a week or once mm -hmm. a month, you've got to be committed to it, mm -hmm. to make it successful. Stick together, stick together on whatever you're looking for. When we done the survey, they decided that they, they wanted to the test, and didn't we go around to Mary we are? The petition that John's talking about, we went round all those, we all took share in that, and we had to work along with the tenants, though, didn't we? We had a lot of late nights, and I th all, the, all the people in the flats, they all agreed. We, we went and we asked their views, how they felt about it, and they all agreed the same as everybody else. It, it was They didn't want flats. Mm -hmm. We went round all the timber tops. Mm -hmm. but, it certainly wasn't. I mean, there was a lot of many long nights that we walked round the doors and things like that. But, but now you see a road cleaner. I think it's always important to say that, um, that if you're going to establish yourself, um, then you've got to be recognised. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, in other words, um, if you're picking people who's going to represent you, it's easy to, to pick people. But you've got to watch that the people you pick, they're the type who could destroy your committee because they could um, make conflict between yourself and whoever your landlord is going to be, etc. You've got to be get very careful now. Um, and it's always where it's he or she has got to put the, the, the views of the people forward. I think I mean, a committee can sit and can talk and give their own views, but I think it's always important that it's the views of the tenants that goes forward. And they're good to get organised, mm -hmm. uh, but you've got to be uh, recognised as a good working committee and get your priorities right, mm -hmm. and then you move forward. Much of what has been achieved so far has come about from a good working relationship between the tenants and the council, i.e. good communication good information, and the most important one of all, trust. This kind of marriage is successful, partly because the tenants are not drawn into the council system. Murrayfield presents an opportunity for the council to show others what can be done to change an area that was once noted as one of the worst to one of the best.